Today I'm going to be taking a look at yet another Arch-based Linux distribution. That Arch-based Linux distribution is called Reborn OS. Let's take a look. So Reborn OS, I don't know much about it. I've had a few of my viewers request Reborn OS in the past. Uh, it is not listed on DistroWatch, so it's not a distro probably a lot of people know about. They do have a web page. Uh, it is a WordPress.com web page. You can find it at RebornOS.WordPress.com. So they don't even have a proper domain name. Uh, so this is pretty much a small distro, you know, may, maybe what I would call a garage distro, you know. Not sure how many developers are behind this project. Could be as few as one guy, I'm not sure. Uh, reading their webpage here. Features. Choose from over 10 desktop environments. One ISO with unlimited desktop environments. Well, it says choose from over 10, and then it says unlimited desktop environments. So 10 is not unlimited, but, you know, a little bit of a marketing speak there. And then they show you that there are, in fact, uh, probably about a dozen desktop environments window managers available in the installer. They have a screenshot of the installer. The installer, though, looks like it's the Cinchi installer from Antergos. So is this an Arch-based distro or is it based off of Antergos? Not really sure. It looks like they're using the installer from Antergos. Uh, not, maybe, uh, maybe the website will clarify that. As I keep reading, uh, customized to your heart's content, 20 different options in the installer, never fall behind, of course, being Arch. Uh, okay, here they go. Reborn OS is based on both Arch and Antergos, meaning that it's a rolling release. So it is based off Antergos. And this is my question going into something like this is, okay, so you're basing off of Antergos. What exactly are you doing differently than Antergos? What makes Reborn OS worth using. Why wouldn't I just use Antergos, which I quite like Antergos. Uh, looking at the About Us page, let's see, it's a small team. It looks like they mentioned three different people as far as developers, these three guys and others. So they do have, you know, more than one developer at least. Anyway, I'm going to download the ISO and install this inside of VM. The ISO is about 1.3 gigs in size. All right, so downloaded the ISO, and I'm going to be installing this in a VM today inside VirtualBox. So Reborn OS, here's the boot menu. We have the options at the menu, Boot Reborn OS, Boot Reborn OS after install, NVIDIA Reborn, Run MemTest, Hardware Info, Reboot, and Power Off. I'm just going to do the first option, Boot Reborn OS, which should launch us into some kind of live environment. may take a minute or two for the live environment to load. Booting off the ISO sometimes takes takes a little time. You guys doing this on physical hardware, this would be the same as trying to boot off a live USB key. And we wait. All right. Really nice little uh, wallpaper here. This abstract art with all the colors with the Reborn OS logo here. Very cool. All right, and the Cinchi installer here. This is the standard installer in Antergos. So we could play around in the live desktop environment. The live desktop environment, by the way, looks like it's the budgie desktop environment they're using here. So could be wrong about that, but it looks like budgie. Is that the Raven menu? Yeah, pretty sure it's budgie here in this live environment. So I'm going to choose to install Reborn OS. All right, English has been chosen for my language. That's correct. I'm just going to click the arrow button to go forward. All right, for best results, we need 8 gigs of space checked. Uh, plugged into a power source, check. Connected to the internet, check. Since she is up to date, check. There's no temporary packaging issues that would interfere with installation, check. So all of this is checked. It looks like it's good to go. All right. Country or territory? It's already chosen English for our language, but which English? Uh, looks like it's selected English Australia. I actually need English US. Here it is in the list. Click forward here. 
All right, it has cor correctly chosen the time zone for me. The central time zone in the U.S. is correct for me. English U.S. has been chosen for our keyboard. That's correct. We do have a test field. We could type something in to test the keyboard if we wanted. All right, now the main part of the installation. Choosing a desktop environment or window manager. We have the options of base, which I guess is a base install. So no GUI when you're done. You're pretty much still have a command prompt. Then we have Budgie, Cinnamon, Deepen, Enlightenment, Gnome, i3, KDE, LXQt, Mate, Openbox, Pantheon, Windows Interface. That is interesting. I'm not exactly sure what that is. It looks like Cinnamon designed to be Windows. Okay. And then, of course, XFCE. Uh, since it looks like Budgie might be kind of their flagship product because they're, at least on the live ISO here, they're using the Budgie desktop environment. So I'm actually going to go with Budgie for the desktop environment. Looks like that's what is, is really their flagship edition maybe. So that's the one I'm going to go with. All right. Do we want to add accessibility packages? That would be for people with disabilities, particularly uh, people with uh, vision impairment. I, I won't have anybody that has any kind of a disability using my machine, so I don't need to tick that on. Applications to perform system maintenance. I'm not going to tick that on. The AUR, it's enabled by default. I'll leave that on. I like the, using the AUR. A web browser. The Chromium web browser is ticked on. I don't use Chromium. I'll tick that one off. Do I need a desktop email client that, that would install Thunderbird? No. Do I need Dropbox? I, I actually do use Dropbox, but I'm not going to bother in a VM. Firefox, yep. Since I disabled Chromium, I want to enable Firefox to install Firefox. Flash, yeah, go ahead and install it. The kernel, is it going to use the LTS kernel? That's ticked on. I like using the LTS kernel. And is there anything else I really want to turn on? I can turn on things like Spotify, Steam, the Vivaldi browser, VLC. I'll turn on VLC. All right, that's pretty much it, at least for this VM. All right, uncomplicated firewall will be installed with these rules. So it's going to it's going to install UFW. All right, the Arch user repository of course is going to be enabled and this is a, a disclaimer that the AUR is community driven and not supported by Arch or Reborn OS, meaning install things from the AUR at your own risk. All right, let Cinchi sort our mirror list. That's recommended. Yeah, that's fine. All right, and then what do we want to do with the disk? I'm going to choose the first option, erase disk and install Reborn OS. Basically, Reborn OS is going to take the entire 15 gig hard drive of this virtual machine I created. If we needed to do some kind of manual partitioning, uh, we could go down here and choose this option, choose exactly where Reborn OS should be installed, edit the partition table, choose the mount points, etc. I'm just going to do the automatic partitioning. So I'm going to choose the first option. All right, and Cinchi is ranking the mirrors, so it's trying to find the fastest mirrors for our package manager. It says, please be patient. So this may take a minute or two. I'm going to pause the video while it sorts the mirrors. Okay, so the mirror list has been sorted. And now we have warning. This will overwrite everything currently on the drive. Basically, we're about to format the drive right to the disk. So... There's no coming back from this. Click forward. All right, we have a summary. Location's good, time zone's good, keyboard layout, good, desktop environment, yep, I chose Budgie. Features, okay, and the partition scheme. All right, it's creating a boot partition, a swap partition, main partition will be an extended four file system. Okay, all that looks good. All right, are you really sure you want to continue? Yes, all right. Now we need to create our username and password. My username is going to be DT. The computer's name, the host name will be DT. Pick a username. DT. Pick a password. I'm going to create a really strong and complicated password. Alright. Log in automatically? Nah. I like being asked for a password to log in. And that's it. And this portion of the install, typically on most Linux distros these days, takes between 5 and 10 minutes. So I'm going to pause the video while the installation completes. All right, the installation has completed. Now that took quite a bit longer than your typical Linux install. That part of the installer that I said usually takes five to 10 minutes on most Linux distros 
took almost half an hour here on Reborn OS, and it's because it's based on Antergos. The Antergos installer is a net installer, meaning it has to pull down all the packages from the web. That's why they can offer so many desktop environments and window managers in the installer. It's because all those desktop environments are not on the ISO. It actually pulls it all down from the web. So the Antergos installer, that's really my only complaint with Antergos as a distro is the installer. It's a little lengthy because, again, it's pulling it all down from the web. Same thing with Reborn OS, but it's a minor gripe. Anyway, to complete an installation of any operating system, you always have to reboot your machine. So you click yes, your machine reboots. That's what I'm going to do right now. All right, and we're rebooting our freshly installed Reborn OS. Reborn OS with the budgie desktop environment. One thing I will mention, I was asking what is different from Antrigos and Reborn OS, what's the difference? One thing I noticed is the installer. We had a few more options in the installer as far as desktop environments and window managers than Antrigos. Antrigos has, I think, eight options, where we had 12, I think, 12 options in the installer for Reborn OS. For example, I know i3 was in there. I don't think that's offered in the Antergos install. Um, they, that Windows-esque uh, desktop environment, which is really cinnamon, skinned in such a way to look like Windows. I know that's not in the Antergos install, so anyway, let's type our password here. That is the GNOME Display Manager, GDM. It's an interesting choice for a display manager considering I didn't choose to install the GNOME desktop environment. Or did I? This looks like the GNOME desktop environment. This is a GNOME shell. Uh, it, not exactly sure what's going on here. I'm actually going to pause the video and see. Uh, did I choose GNOME in the installer? I'm pretty sure I did not. No, I actually rewatched the video that I'd made er earlier of the installation, and I did choose Budgie during the install. I'm not sure why I have the GNOME shell. Uh, I'm actually going to go back to the login manager and see if there's a Budgie session that I can log into. Maybe it installed GNOME and Budgie. I don't know. Uh, before I do that, though, it's asking me, do I want to enable flat packs? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? So we can add the flat pack repository. It's asking for root password. All right. Let's go shopping. Okay. Anyway, it opens our package manager. It closed that out. Let me log out, though. I'm really curious. Uh, no, that's not a log out. How do I log out of this session? Not that familiar with uh, GNOME Shell, but log out. Log out. All right. Now, the sessions, uh, where are they at? Right here, I believe. Okay, we do have the budgie desktop. So it installed both both GNOME and Budgie. So surely that should not be the case. I should not have GNOME installed and the Budgie desktop environment both installed on the system. So I'm pretty sure that's a bug. Uh, anyway, close that out. Uh, initial thoughts on the desktop, the wallpaper, eh not that attractive some weird abstract art with some strange colors the budgie desktop environment which is usually a very beautiful gorgeous desktop environment wow this is pretty hideous for one thing why does the budgie menu have a gnome logo on it that makes absolutely no sense to have this foot here which is the gnome logo here in the budgie desktop environment of course we have our sidebar or side menu here the raven menu i believe is what they call it in budgie our system is up to date that's uh pamac i believe yeah this is our gui package manager anyway i'm going to go through the normal uh you know install and first impression review here i'm going to go through the menu and show you what is installed by default here in reborn os so under accessories we have books this is gnome books uh, we have our calculator, which I believe is the GNOME calculator. It has several different modes. Basic mode, advanced mode, financial mode, programming mode, keyboard mode. The advanced mode. 
Really nice calculator for those that need such a thing. Also under accessories we have GNOME documents for managing your documents. We have files. This is the Nautilus file manager and wow the default GNOME icon set that thing is hideous. I hate that icon set. It's one thing I've never understood why GNOME doesn't develop a better icon set because their default icon set is terrible. Our text editor is gedit, the standard plain text editor in the GNOME desktop environment. This is gedit 3.28.1 and I believe the latest version of the GNOME desktop is 3.28 so a lot of the apps are also going to be version 3.28. Also under accessories we have the HP device manager, we have GNOME Maps. The map utility is a really neat utility actually. I'm not sure how much use it would get on a desktop, but you know, this was a mobile app, this would be really cool. But anyway, the map, you just zoom in, I zoom in with a mouse wheel and I am somewhere in Africa here. <laughs> Let me zoom back out. <laughs> Might have zoomed in a little too far, this is Ethiopia. Anyway. This is a really, really neat mapping utility. Very cool. Also under accessories, we have Reborn Maintenance. Not exactly sure what that is. It requires a root password, though. So, all right, Reborn Improvements, new applications. Okay, we have uh, some repository stuff. I guess we can add and remove repos, edit our mirror list. Under Maintenance, okay, we have... Uh, Clear cache, clean journal, clean built packages, rank mirrors, unnecessary packages, updating the system. So this is like your system cleaner, basically. So those of you familiar with things like Bleachbit or Stacer, uh, it gives you some of that sort of functionality. And repair here, a few simple steps to prevent reborn from disaster and nurse it back to, to health. You can save, recover programs, rebuild Grub, reinstall Grub, downgrade, remove package, leaving dependencies, and ask actual humans on the forum for help. So I guess this link links you to the forums, probably opens your web browser to the Reborn OS support forums. Also under accessories, we have the GNOME Tweak Utility. Really cool that that's installed by default. Even though we're really not using GNOME, we're in the budgie desktop environment. You see, it's all the GNOME apps. Everything here is GNOME. It, it's almost like we installed their GNOME version and it just accidentally gave us the budgie desktop environment. We have GNOME weather. I'm not going to type in location for weather. Actually, wow, by default, it already knows where I'm at. And so it's using a geolocation. I'm, it's probably an option I ticked on or was automatically ticked on during the install. It asked me, you know, everything extra I wanted to enable. Probably one of the things that was enabled. Under graphics, we have GNOME Photos. Just all the GNOME apps. Firefox, which I chose to install. This should be Firefox Quantum. Again, if you guys remember in the installer, we had the option of installing Chromium, Firefox, Opera, Vivaldi. I chose to install Firefox. And this is, yeah, Firefox Quantum. This is 60.0.1. Close that, all that out. All right. Also under internet, we have the Avahi server and we have Polari. That is a chat client. Yeah. This would connect connect us to the IRC uh, chat protocol. Probably to the free node network is where we'd want to go. This would be useful if you needed to connect to, say, a support chat channel, such as Reborn's support chat channel. Let me quit that. All right. Under Office, nothing's installed in Office except the calendar, our contacts, and the Evolution email client. Under Programming, you know, nothing that would interest most of us, but CMake is here and some cute four stuff. Sound and video, we have the Brazero Disk Burner. This is the standard disk burning utility, again, in the GNOME desktop environment. Under sound and video, we have Cheese, which is a webcam app. We have Music, which I'm not exactly sure. Is this a GNOME app? Yeah, this is GNOME Music, I believe. Yeah, GNOME Music 3.28.2.1, a music player and management application for GNOME. Also under sound and video, we have Pulse Audio. 
the cute V4L2 test utility. We have sound recorder. We have videos, which is another GNOME app. This is GNOME videos. Also under sound and video, we have VLC, but I chose to install VLC. So Firefox and VLC are installed, but I added those during the install. Under Sundry, we have Adobe Flash and our print settings. Under System Tools, we have the budgie desktop settings. Okay, now this is what we needed. I was wondering about that GNOME tweak tool. I really didn't need it. I mean, we would need the GNOME tweak tool to tweak the GNOME session that's also installed on the system. But the budgie desktop settings is what we need here to tweak, you know, our budgie desktop environment. Because quite frankly, it needs some tweaking. I don't like the look of this top bar. The colors are a little strange. Uh, that logo really needs to be removed from the panel here. It doesn't make any sense to have a GNOME logo uh, here in the budgie panel. And also under system tools here we have our deconfig editor, uh, manage printing, our settings manager. This is kind of your control panel here. Standard control panel you see. And things like the GNOME desktop environment. All right, we also have our software, the GNOME software, which we've already seen, but we really didn't take a look at it. You can search for applications. You can search by category, such as the audio video category. We can install things like Gradio, MPV, Caden Live, Spotify, Pythos, etc. If you wanted to, instead of searching by category, you just, if you know the name of the app you want to install, you just search for it. So if I wanted to install Caden Live, for example, and I knew that's what I wanted, I just start typing for it. I click on it, I click the install button, and it begins installing. I'm not going to install that in this VM though, but it is a program I use a lot, so I often install Caden Live on every machine of mine. All right, under System Tools, we have the GNOME Terminal, GNOME Terminal 3.28. Really nice terminal emulator. And we have Xterm, another terminal emulator. Under Utilities, we have our Archive Manager. This is the standard GNOME Archive Manager. It's called File Roller. 3.28 is its version number. Also under Utilities, we have the Disk Usage Analyzer. We have GNOME Disk. And also we have our Document Viewer, Fonts, Image Viewer, Logs, Password and Keys, our Screenshot Utility, and we have our System Monitor. This should be the GNOME System Monitor. Let's see what kind of system resources we are using. So I gave this VM two cores of my six core CPU. I gave it four gigs of RAM, and it is using quite a lot of CPU actually. It is using 30% of both cores that I gave this machine. That is really high CPU usage, uh, especially for the budgie desktop environment. The budgie desktop environment is not like lightweight, but it's not usually a hog. Uh, GNOME is a real system resource hog, but this is not good. Memory is using one gig of the four gigs of memory I gave it. That's not great, but that's okay, I guess. Seems a little high, though, for budgie. I haven't noticed it, uh, especially the CPU being that high before in a budgie desktop environment. All right, under the other category, we have Add Remove Software. We have the Arch Linux Kernel Manager. Let's launch that. And basically, this is where we could... Uh, install remove kernels. We're already running the Linux uh, LTS kernel. The latest one I believe is 4.14. If I wanted to check that in a, uh, in a terminal, all you would do is, uh, let me open the GNOME terminal, uname space dash a. And the kernel, actually we're not running the LTS. We're running 4.16.9. That's strange because in the installer I know I chose to do the LTS kernel. So I'm not sure why I have the GNOME desktop environment installed when I chose Budgie. I'm not a, a, sure why I have the latest Linux kernel when I asked for the LTS. Because uh, 4.16.9 is like today's kernel. I mean, that's <laughs> the latest. So some strange things here going on. We have our software update utility. This is PAMAC again. Checking for updates. Now being a rolling release distro, there could be some updates, but now everything's up to date. 
that's good. And the reason everything's up to date is because that installer pulled everything down from the web. So it, it probably pulled down the freshest packages. So that's why it's up to date. So I guess that is the upside to that net installer. All right, so I'm going to open the settings manager again here. And basically it's kind of our control center. And I'm going to go to background. And I'm going to change the desktop background here. See what kind of wallpapers are offered by default. Looks like your standard uh, GNOME wallpaper pack. So, which there is some some nice stuff in this wallpaper pack. I really like this one. You know, I like you know wallpapers with not a lot going on, not a ton of different colors. Uh, that is actually pretty cool. Fits better with the top panel. Although the top panel, I still don't like some of what's going on with the coloring and especially that icon and that top panel that's just gonna bug me for the entire review having that GNOME logo on my budgie panel <laughs> uh, checking out some of the other wallpapers here that's a really nice dark wallpaper if I was using a light theme but since I'm using a dark theme you know what I'm gonna go back to something a little lighter we'll do that one yeah I'm good with that all right, I'm going to open up the Budgie desktop settings and let's see what our options are for icons. Let me open up our file manager. So I'm going to open up Nautilus here with these hideous Adwaita icons. What other icons do we have? I really don't care what icon pack is installed as long as it's not Adwaita. Okay, that's much better. I'm, I'm good with that. That's called Flat Remix. This is Flat Remix Dark. This is the one we would need because our panel is dark. So, And that's pretty much it. That's our, our only option. I'm not sure why that wasn't turned on by default instead of Add Weta. Because this is so much better. Uh, again, I, I'm assuming that was probably meant to be our default icon set for some reason. I don't know. Everything's kind of screwy here. Again, I don't think GNOME or any of those GNOME apps are really supposed to be here. I could be wrong about that. But it's strange to have two different desktop environments installed when I chose one. Uh, and we can play around with the fonts a little bit. I, I'm not going to play around with the system fonts here on camera. Our panel here, here is all, all our widgets that are located in the panel. We could add, remove some of those. We could create another panel if I wanted both a top or a bottom panel. Of course, I can move this panel if I wanted it instead of at the top, at the bottom. Uh, I'm not going to bother doing that. Under settings, we have, of course, the position of the panel again. If we wanted to move it to the bottom, we can move it to the left. Actually, that doesn't look too bad on the left. And the one that really makes the least amount of sense is moving it to the right. Um, for those of us in Western nations, you know, everything we do as far as speed or uh, writing is done left to right. So putting the panel on the right side of the screen. Pretty much everything starts for us on the left side of the screen. So the left side of the screen really makes the most sense if you were going to do left or right. You know what, I'll just put it at the bottom for now. We'll just leave it at the bottom. Set the size, width, height. It's set to a 39 pixel height. It looks okay to me. I won't change that. We can automatically hide the panel. It's set to never or automatic or intelligent. I'll leave it to never. When I have a full length panel like this on the screen, I usually like it to be visible always. Just a personal preference. And we have some other options here. We have our auto start uh, settings here. This is the programs that launch on startup when you first log into the Budgie desktop environment. Nothing is actually here, but you know, you could have programs that you want automatically launching, such as if I wanted like the Conky desktop system monitor. You know, you would add that to your auto start apps if it was installed. All right, we have our side menu or our side panel here. This Raven, I guess they call it Raven side menu. Anyway, it's got some applets. This is our calendar, sound. It even gives us output, uh, audio output, video output, audio input output. Yep. I guess it tells you what's connected as far as like webcams, microphones, that sort of thing. We have our notification tab here. This would be where all, all our notifications would be. It says no unread notifications, so nothing to, to view here. Let me move my head out of the way here. 
and we have a little settings cog here that should bring up the budgie desktop settings it does we have the lock here should lock the screen I'm assuming but I don't think it did I'm assuming that's to lock the screen I don't know it didn't do anything when I clicked it and this so session yeah log out of the session okay so anyway that's a, a very brief look at Reborn OS. Uh, again, I, I don't know much about it. Didn't know much about it going in. This was just running through the install and basically a first look, first impression kind of review. Just, you know, spending, I don't know, an hour or so installing it and taking a look at it. Uh, what are my thoughts? I mentioned what's the difference between Reborn OS and Antergos. Um, it looked like there were a few more desktop environments as an option during the installer. And that's pretty much the only difference I could really tell you right off the bat. The different, and the other difference I can tell you is Antergos is a little bit more polished and put together. Uh, I don't like the fact that I chose the Budgie desktop environment as my desktop environment, and I got both GNOME and Budgie installed. So, the installer kind of have to give it a fail. Uh, now, the Budgie desktop environment. Budgie desktop environment looks good. It, it wasn't a very good implementation of the Budgie desktop environment. I, I will say one thing. When I moved the panel from the top to the bottom, I got the normal uh, icon here, the menu icon, and it removed that GNOME foot. <laughs> so that actually did make the panel look a lot better when I moved it. It may have just been a glitch when you first log in. You had that GNOME logo on the panel. But the Budgie desktop environment, I love the Budgie desktop environment. Uh, as far as app selection, it's all the GNOME apps, you know, which most of the GNOME apps are pretty good. I don't mind a lot of the GNOME apps, and it's got a pretty good suite of software installed. No Office programs, though, so I would need to install, you know, the LibreOffice suite for, for me. You know, I always install LibreOffice, but pretty much everything else here I would want. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the apps installed, though. So overall, you know, I give the installation, I give the installation kind of a fail, uh, the budgie desktop environment here in reborn OS I give it a solid B plus again does it serve any real purpose uh, I mean there's too many distros out there and right now there are way too many arch based distros out there and when you take an arch based distro and not only you're basing it off of arch you're basing it off of Antergos which is also based off of arch uh, what are you doing different than Antergos I really don't see the point uh, I think the devs would, you know, better serve the community just helping out Antergos, to be honest, uh, you know. But you know what? I don't want to beat up anybody that, you know, donates their time, spends their, their time contributing to an open source project. So before I go, I do want to give a shout out to all my patrons. I want to do a special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. A.K. Ron, Mr. Neely Pops, John, Brian, Carl, Greg, Carlos, Rob, Matt, Darkwin, Mark, Christian, Jake, Benjamin, Stephen, Marcus, Interceptor, Bob, Leor, Omar, Silvio, David, and Alex. You guys rock. You guys help make this show possible. Peace, guys.